Okay, ELE 112, this is Maximum Power Chapter 8-7, uh, Working Problems. I wanted you to take a peek at a few of them. These will definitely help you get through this part of the homework over the, uh, over the uh, online learning. Um, I'm going to start really easy. We've seen some of these uh, in the example that I was talking about. This example right here being the easiest example out there. When a source and its resistance are known, in this case 2,000 ohms, we can find out what the maximum power resistance needs to be so that we get the maximum power out there. Basically, the load is selected to match the internal resistance of the device that you've plugged your load into. So, for example, if this black check mark was your home stereo and this blue check mark was the speaker that you plugged in, if the stereo in the back said internal resistance 2000 ohms, um, it would direct you to plug in with a speaker equal to 2000 ohms to get maximum power. Now, using this simple example, I want to explain why, what happens if this 2K gets smaller versus gets bigger. Now, you'll both, you'll all agree that if my resistance grows, if it goes this way up, then the current that flows in this circuit drops and the power can go down. The power can go down. Um, if your load resistance uh, goes down, then you get too much, even though you're not delivering maximum power, your current goes through the roof. And usually what happens is this guy out here in the yellow, this circuit out here in the yellow blows up. And that's what happens with your home stereo. You buy it, it comes with speakers. They're rated at eight ohms, for example. Your stereo is rated for eight ohms, but then one day you destroy the speakers. So you go buy a new set and you accidentally pick up a two ohm set. Well, that causes this example to take place where the resistance has now gone down, the current in the system goes through the roof and you blow up this stereo system. Now you don't need speakers or a stereo. On the other side of the coin, maybe you bought 32 ohm speakers instead of the eight that came with the system. Well, when that happens, then your stereo here in the green will underperform and you will get less volume, less power out of your system and you won't be happy. Okay, so let's continue with our analysis, shall we? Let's make the problem just a little bit more difficult where sometimes you can't do it by just inspection or maybe you just wanna know how to do it by hand. So here's the circuit. It's a 30 volt, um, it's a 30 volt power source. DC, uh, with 1,000 and 2,000 built into it, and I have to plug a load in. So I'm going to show you how to calculate it by inspection. Basically, you remove the load right here, and you put your eyeball, that's what that picture is, it's an eyeball, looking back, and you are actually using the technique called r -thevenin, which shorts the supply or puts a wire in its place. Now, the only resistance your eyeball sees is 1,000 and 2,000 ohms, and they are clearly in series. So, your value that you select to get maximum power 
is you plug in a 3000 ohm resistor and you have maximum power delivered to the load. Not too bad yet, right? Not too bad. Why don't we tweak the problem? Why don't we get a problem in there with a current source to kind of flip, flip the situation again? So we're gonna take this circuit in black here and we're gonna redraw it here in red. And what we have to do is follow our Thevenin steps. Pull the load out, replace the source. This is a current source. Current sources are opened, not shorted. So here is the open. And what that means is that it's a huge resistance. It goes away. You don't have to worry about it. So when you climb into bed at the opposite end of the circuit where the load is plugging in and we look back with our eyeball this way, what we see once again are two series resistors and the total Thevenin circuit, the total resistive Thevenin circuit sees 6,000 ohms. So that's what you actually have to um, plug in as a load to get maximum power transferred to your load. Kind of interesting. Not that much more work with a current source. Not that much more work. Just different work, right? Okay, let's continue. We're in here. Here it is. Wow, let me write this in black. Wow. This circuit just got reworked by converting the current source to a power supply. Remember what I told you? You can do this doing anything. It works all day long. Very cool. I'm signing out for maximum power uh, transfer theorem. Have fun with your homework. Let's go to a new set of problems. Again, this is the first part of your homework. You're going to be finding load values for your uh, resistance that would be plugged into the gap here um, to deliver maximum power. Now, here's a real scary circuit. It's got four parts, but you will see that it kind of isn't so bad once you figure out what to do. Okay, so we're going to again, basically what we're going to do for all these homework problems that require you to find the maximum power resistive load is we're going to do an R Thevenin to the circuit. Okay, so we short the supply. Here we are. I'm going to show you in drawing two here. Um, we have shorted the supply right there. We have removed... We have no load. We put our eyeball right here on the open location. And I want you to understand what I wrote here in the scribble in black. Um, R3 is directly across the gap. R3 is all that gap sees, and that gap has to lock R3 in place. And we have to go to the... Um, red side of the circuit here, the red side, and it needs to be collapsed from the left moving towards the right. In other words, R3, the 3K resistor, is the very, very, very last resistor to be compressed. We didn't have that in the first couple of problems that we practiced. This is new, and you have to look for it in your problem. So, redrawing picture two down here in the yellow allows us to clear and see the three resistors that were left behind. I've not drawn in the, the power supply because it's a dead short and it's a piece of wire basically. We don't care. But R1 and R2 and R3, which were over here, actually R1, R2, and R4, which were over here, have been redrawn here on the left side. And doggone it, they look like a big series circuit, don't they? 
They are. So if you want to calculate R thevenin of this circuit, all you have to do is add those three resistors. They end up at 9,000 ohms right here. And that one resistor that is added to produce 9,000 becomes parallel with 3K. Now, I didn't draw it, but I hope you see it, that it will become parallel right here with the 3K resistor. And we do the computation over here, and you end up with a final answer of 2.25K ohms. So, to impedance match the circuit at the top of the packet, we would plug in a 2.25K ohm resistor to get maximum power. Any other value will not give you the maximum power. Couple of slides. Problem number three, or a page number three. Uh, again, we want to find the load resistance for maximum power. And our goal, if you haven't started to write things down, our goal will be remove the load, open a current source, short a power supply. Open a current source, short a power supply. That's right here. That is crucial. When you don't know what the heck to do, everybody on the planet can do step one. Then you look into the gap and you reduce from the other end using R thevenin. Well, you're not actually using R thevenin. You've already used the technique in steps one and two here to look into the gap and to short or open um, your source. So, Again, just for fun, we'll do a problem with a current source right here, okay? Now, there's a 5,000 ohm resistor in parallel with the source. We redraw the picture and take the source away, and when we do that, the circuit usually gets simpler. What do you see out there looking in here? You see 5,000 ohms. Problem complete. That wasn't too bad, right? That wasn't too bad. Let's do one that's a little bit a little bit more uh, traffic, a few extra parts. Here's our load. Uh, let me get a green. Here's our load. And we removed it over here. And we redrew this traffic over here. We redrew it so that we could open the source, which created this little track to ground. See, there's a circuit right there. There's a full circuit there. And if we redraw that over here, I've even shown you the open source. It's there, but you ignore it. You throw it away. This is why I keep telling you, you got to draw pictures. You got to make notes. You got to store your equations on formula sheets. You got to draw, draw, draw. I know I'm sounding like dad, but you want to do it right. You don't want to just do it. Am I correct? Don't answer that. I can't hear you. Okay, so looking at this picture, all of a sudden this problem down here becomes exactly the same as many of the other problems. There's two resistors looking in. They're in series. When you add 20 and 10, you get 30K. Boom, you're done. Slides. Go back a cup. Last problem of the day. Transform the circuit. We're going to do something different here. We're going to take a current source. Pretend that you hate current sources, okay? Uh, your name is Mark. Your name is Eric. You hate current sources, and you want to try a higher level cir circuit technique and you're going, there's no way this circuit technique is going to work, right? Well, we just worked this problem a few minutes ago. We worked this problem uh, on another page, um, and we got um, a load resistor match of 6,000 ohms. That's 6,000 ohms, okay? Um, surely, uh, surely if we... Um, 
transform the current source. Remember that in sections one, one and two in your chapter eight? So I'm going to take this current source in black that's X'd out and this resistor, and I'm simply going to move that resistor in series, and I'm going to transform the current source, which is one amp. I'm going to take the one amp and multiply it by 1,000 uh, by uh, 1,000 ohms and get a new power supply of 1,000 volts, if my math is right. And I'm going to connect. You'll notice that over here I made, um, up at the top, I have points 1 and 2, and I've continued with points 1 and 2 throughout so that you could see where I am. I just took and transformed the circuit on the left uh, a current source and a resistor in parallel into a voltage supply with a series resistor. And look what happens down here across pins zero, 1 and 2. I take the voltage source, I short it, and what am I left with? My Thevenin resistance, which is 6,000. Go back a couple of...